Up till now we have been exploring Euclid's theorems which show us that the line drawn from the center of a circle and hits a chord either at 90 degrees or in half gives us some useful information. So that was the videos just before this one. Now we need to move on to a few other things that Euclid discovered. So let's draw ourselves a circle and then locate the center point. Then what I'm going to do is draw two lines like this and then I'm going to take A and B and somehow allow them to form or well, they're going to join together somewhere over here and we can call that angle C or letter C for example. Now what Euclid did was he then went and measured this angle over here and let's say he measured that at about 80 degrees. He then went and measured this angle here. Now if you just look at this logically which angle seems to be the biggest one? Well, look how spread out the one at the center is. That's pretty spread out over there. Whereas this one's a lot more narrow, well, it's a lot narrower. And what Euclid discovered was that there is a direct relationship between them in such a way that the angle on the outside will always be exactly half of the angle on the, at the center. Now we can come up with many different combinations. We could form A and B over here, for example, and the same phenomenon would take place. This angle over here, the one on the outside, would be 40. As long as the angle at the center and the angle on the outside, on the edge, are coming from the same points, well they are, they're both coming from A and B. Because if I go from A to O and I go from B to O, and then if I go from, and then I can also get to, and I should label this C, I can also get to angle C by starting at A and B as well. And so we can see that angle O and angle C, they come from the same points, points A and point B. And so when that happens, the one, the angle at the center will always be double the one on the circumference. And we could do this a whole, in a whole lot of other places. We could connect A and B there, we could connect them there, over there, over there, over there, over there, but over there. And now we can't go over here. I'll show you why. What I want you to do is quickly connect A and B. Now have a look at angle O. Okay, wait, what I want you to first do is look at the dotted line. Everything on that side of the dotted line will be segment one. So we'll call all of that segment one. And everything to the left, we'll call that segment two, like this. See, so I've just drawn this little circle to show you what I mean. So a circle segment is just a certain part of the circle. So that dotted line is gonna divide it into two segments. Now, if you look at angle O, well, that's going to be in segment one. And if you look at any of these angles, what segment are they in? Well, they are all in segment one. As soon as we go to these angles down here, those are all part of segment two. And then that relationship doesn't work anymore. So the angle O, which is the center, has to be in the same segment as the angle that we're forming on the edge. Then you can use this. And so what we would do, in a, in a test is you would say that angle C is equal to 40 degrees and the reason for this is it's quite a long reason it goes like this it says that the angle at the center is always equal to two times meaning double the angle at the circumference so what we're saying is that the angle at the center meaning the 80 is always going to be two times the angle at the circumference but remember it only works if they are in the same segment. So with this question here, for example, which letters are forming angle O? Well, if we had to go backwards, we would see that we would get back to B. And if we went this way, we would see that we get back to C. And which angle is forming A? Well, if we had to go from A backwards to the edge of the circle, you would hit B. And if you keep going backwards, you would hit C. And so B and C are forming A and they're forming O. And now let's quickly join line BC together. And so remember that line will divide the circle into two segments, so segment one and segment two. So are A, angle A, and angle O on the same side of, this, of the segment line? Yes, they are. So we can use Euclid's theorem, which says that angle O will then be equal to 40. Why? Because the angle at the center is always equal to two times the angle at the circumference. As long as O and A are on the same side of the, of the dotted line and they come from the same letters B and C.